All right, so I think it's time we explain the army of shadows and how exactly this function works. I think it is a really good function, and the way they did it is so sick, okay? So there's four different types of resources, actually technically five for now that you're able to get, and we're going to explain them all. We're going to explain which shadows you should be prioritizing and which ones you should unlock first and all that good stuff. So how do you use these shadows? Now, shadows can be used inside battles in everything, right? Essentially everything once you unlock it in chapter nine. And you're going to be able to use them just to do literally anything. So we're not going to actually fight and finish it, but just to show how exactly shadows work. Um, if we go into this, you are able to equip a leader that's going to have the uh, leader ability, which is going to be the shadows authority. So for example, Igris, if you put him in the first slot, gives crit rate. And then we've got um, Tank who gives defense. Now, because Choi does not go off of crit rate and he's my main DPS, well, we're going to put um, Tank in there for now. Now, they all have their own little skills and passive abilities. So we're going to check that much later. But for early game, we're going to talk about which shadows are the best to unlock because obviously later game, you're going to be able to unlock all of them. So you're going to be able to see once we fight the Arachnid, okay, that we go in and you're able to just press Z in this case and the, all the shadows are going to pop up, both armies from Igris and also Tank and they're just going to do damage, right? Overall, if we see, they've already done like a good 5-7% almost. So like the shadows do damage, right? They do pretty good damage and they've been out for like 15 seconds about and then they're gone. So just to, wanted to show you guys that, right? Next up, something important is that every time you use your shadow soldiers, they will consume shades, all right? And shades can be obtained, as of right now, from doing story when you're not at max and also gates. So you will see shades look like the one on the right, the 500 that you see right above my cursor. That is the one that's going to be giving the, well, that's that's what shades are. So you don't actually see the resource. Like if you go into your inventory, you won't see that resource, right? Let's just pop this for fun. Maybe we get something good and that would be kind of crazy if we do. But of course we don't. So you don't see the currency here, right? There's no shades shown. But on screen, yes, you do see shades, which is very important to, to know that you will be getting them from story and gates. That's how you actually use it. Now, if I go on Igris, it will see that it takes 300 shades to use Igris and it takes 200 shades to use tank, all right? So that's the first thing I want to talk about. Now, next up, you have an army level that's going to increase the total power and also the max army capacity. So as you see, there's, if I level this up, right, it's going to now go up to 8,000 shades. So I'm going to be able to hold a more maximum amount of shades, which will allow me to use the shadows more before depleting if I use the shadow soldiers a lot in one battle. That's very important, okay? So that's the first thing. Now, as for the level up functions, there are a couple. So let's talk about the level up functions, and then we're going to get into which shadows you should really be using and how also we're going to talk about how to unlock them. So first of all, when... Well, Igris, I guess in this case, uh, I don't remember if he started off as elite, but it might have been. But you're able to rank them up, and when you rank them up, it will increase their leader skill. It will increase their max army level, which should be giving them more um, soldiers or just doing more damage in general. And then also, as you can see, make them take more shades and also change their design, which looks really sick. Now, it also gives them different skills. So in this case, um, I think the skill, is it the same? It does look to be the same. So blade axle, blade axle. So I think the skill is obtained from becoming a knight. Now, I will take a lot of these, which... Of course, same thing as usual. If you go to the source, it's in gates and also you can get them in story, okay? Those are the two main ways to get all of these shadow resources as of right now. And it will take a hefty amount of gold, but this, getting this is quite a lot, right? Now, besides that, they have the same function as when you reach level 40 for hunters where you're able to upgrade. And with these abyssal fragments, right? You're gonna be able to go all the way up to this, which is gonna increase the amount of power and go up to, well, you could get up to four upgrades. So 12 upgrades total. And you can see it's gonna take abyssal fragments. It's gonna Gonna take some abyssal energy and then later on this too i think is going to be from gates and then battlefield of time so there you go you're able to get some in battlefield of time and it's going to take quite a lot of gold but increase the power like a good like 500 which isn't like the most but it's still pretty good now as we talked about they all have their own uh, shadows authority and i mean they are pretty good so we're going to talk about that more in the other section but each um each shadow has four skills, right? And then the fourth skill usually has a special effect, but not on all of them. As we can see here, he's got stun and then he's just got bleed. So that's mainly how it works. Now, you're able to get Igris after chapter nine. I think tank after chapter 10 or 11. And then these two after you finish the um, red gate arc. So chapter 12, I believe. And to actually unlock them, you're going to need a hundred of these. Now, if you remember, 
using the traces of shadow is the exact same as what you need to rank them up. So I would recommend getting three shadows first before actually ranking anyone up to elite, elite knight, or even further later on once you get much more shadows. Now, this guy Tusk, I don't think he's in because if we do check the story right now, right? Um, in the story, okay. Uh, we, I, I'm like about to, this is Orb of Avarai, so yeah, I think this is, uh, I don't know what it is exactly, I think this is just like a kind of like in-between type of thing, so we should not be getting Tusk yet, I think, um, for people who don't know Tusk, don't you worry about that yet. So that's the main thing. Um, the shades do increase as you go. And then there are the different currencies that will be needed. And it does seem... All right, so yeah. So you start off... So he starts off from common, goes to elite, goes to knight, then elite, knight. And it takes 500 shades, it seems, each. And you do get a skill. Each person gets a fifth skill over time. And then, yes, as we talked about for the army level, it could be up to 12. And then that's going to be giving you up to 14,000 army capacity. But it's going to take a while. 2,800 of those is quite a bit. So now let's go into the shadows and talk about all of them and talk about which ones are the best. So we got four shadows right now. Okay. So it's choosing three out of the four and which one to actually unlock. Okay. Let me just... Uh, free, wow. 4,000 gold. So kind of them. So if we go into the shadows, the second option, you could see these four. So we're going to start from left to right. Actually, no, we're going to start from earliest to latest. So it goes from Igris, Tank, and then Iron and Blades are unlocked at the same time. So Igris gives crit rate. Now, this is actually going to be very good for a lot of units and everyone but Choi Jong-in, basically. Um, Choi Jong-in does not, cannot crit. But for Cha, someone like Cha Hain, who is upcoming, it will be extremely good to run him as the Shadow's Authority. And he's the first one. So in general, you should be unlocking him no matter what. Now, he puts Bleed. So overall, like, it's not exactly the craziest. But if you do max him out, what he is going to do is give an attack increase. So I think late game, I'm going to talk about each one early game in late game early game is good because the crit rate is going to be good for everyone but Choi and Cha Hain should be coming out next and late game the attack increase is going to be good with Jin Wu and any attack DPS is the main thing so I think you have to get him to I no actually never mind I don't know which one it is exactly but uh I think it's only elite knight or no I think it's elite you have to get to to get the max skill but we're, we're gonna have to see now um, next up, we're going to go to tank. I think this guy is someone everyone should run uh, early game. He's the second shadow you should unlock. He is the second one you are able to get, but some people might have wanted to save for iron or blades. But let's just say that um, tank is really good, okay? So what he does is give defense increase, which as of right now, we have, what, three people who work off defense. So we've got Wu Jin Chol, we've got Huang Dong Su, and we've also got Baek Yun Ho. So those are the three that are pretty important Um to know now the main thing is you don't need to run him as a leader but this skill where you're able to stun is super strong for bosses because you're able to just interrupt for one second even one second is enough especially because it's a shadow it's an extra skill it's really good okay um and everything is based off his attack now the last thing he gets is defense increase so i think this will be good in certain team comps, if you are running Baek, if you are running Huang, if you are running um, Wu Jin Chol. But besides that, I don't think it's like something you need to really prioritize. So I really think at the moment, Igris is probably the one... Like, you want to run either Igris as with leader if you're running crit rate. But it also depends on the units. Like, if your units are scaling off defense, then, you know, it's not bad to run this. Because they're going to be tankier and do more damage. But first, I really do think out of these two, it's probably best to get him to max all right now next up you unlock blaze and iron i think he is the worst one out of the four because he has no effects he just does damage but he does give everyone attack increase which is a pretty big thing but i would say overall it's not really too crazy now he also gives an attack increase so it's really going to depend on if you want more crit rate or a bit more attack because blades and igris both do the same thing he gives attack increase and then igris also gives attack increase but he igris gives crit rate and blood baruka gives attack right for the shadows authority so what you're able to do also late game i think what's probably going to be best is running both igris and blades unless they cannot stack it is hard to tell but it is possible if they can stack which will take a bit more testing um but it would not be a bad idea and then iron okay he increases everyone's hp which is going to be good for emma seo jiwu and also um Min Byung Gu to heal more. So if we check it out, he decreases defense, which is going to be very good for damage, right? And then afterwards, what he does is going to be giving a shield, which is very strong because it acts as a type of um, protection where you're just kind of able, you get like super armor type of thing, if that makes any sense. So I think the first three you should unlock is tank, Igris, and iron. And the ones you should equip first, if anything, well, as the shadow's authority is going to depend if you're with Jin Wu or with Hunters. If you're with Jin Wu, then you want to put Igris in most or all cases. If you're with the Hunters, it's going to depend on your main DPS. If you're running Emma, you might want to put Iron as the leader for the HP. 
or if, with Seoji Wu, because Seoji Wu and MR are two very good break units that are both based off HP. The defenders are not exactly the best in this game, but if you're really looking for a bad DPS, it wouldn't be bad. Overall, it doesn't really matter, but obviously use your logic and know which one you equip based off the scalings that you see over here. I think I haven't really mentioned it, but I, I just kind of thought it was logic. But you see, based off max user's HP, so she's off HP, he's off attack, and then here it's off of defense. So that's basically how you would go about it. So if I were to like honestly like give my honest thoughts for uh, these four shadows at the moment, I would say personally, in terms of usability early game, the one that's going to help a lot is tank right but overall the three best is probably tank igris and ire with the least amount of investment but once you get um baruka up it is not bad right if you want to use him um the shadows authority is really gonna just depend on what type of uh, build you got because for example why igris for me could be very good is because of the fact that we've got um this sword where it increases crit damage and crit rate here so increasing crit rate even more is not a bad idea in my case with Jin Wu. But in the future, I don't need the crit rate. And if anything, I would need the attack for Choi Jong in So that's basically um, how it works, where you will need all four. But the first three, I believe you should be getting is Tank, Igris, and Iron, and then Blades, Baruka, later. Now, if you don't want all four, then that is completely fine. You don't really need to go for this, especially if you're trying to build more with Cha Hai in. Sticking to Igris instead of Baruka because they're so similar is completely fine because Cha Hai in is going to be off of crit, right? So that is one main thing. I would say that in total, the first one you should really max out, in my opinion, is probably um, Igris, right? Being off of attack, increasing attack by 100% is great. Now, the thing is with Iron, what's cool about him is that um, if we check here, the defense decrease, everyone gets the scaling, right? Where with Igris, it's only going to be people who scale off attack who are going to profit, where everyone gets this 12% damage increase. So or defense decrease, which is going to increase your damage. So that's going to be the main thing to note. But I would say Iron is honestly really good too. Um, for right now, these are the three best shadows. And then Baruka is there if you really want to run Choi. And if you're like really investing into Choi fully, it's not a bad idea. But even in my case, like because of the fact that when I'm using Hunters, I just put Tank as the leader because there's no point because of the fact that Choi cannot crit. And he is the rate up unit. People want the rate up unit. But that's basically it. I hope this video made sense. I would say that obviously if you want Baruka, it makes sense. Especially for people who have read the Manhua, they know that that is a really cool thing that they actually did. But unfortunately, he's not exactly the best. But yeah, just make sure you get three. And then from that point, once you get the main three, then after that, I would probably start leveling them up. In this case, I would probably go for Igris first because I want this attack increase. And then afterwards, I'm going to be going for uh, Irons once I have it. But his like is like, it's... Wait, where is it? Okay, I have to get him up quite a bit, like 350 to actually get the skill. Um, it's decent, but I don't personally need it at the moment.